are members of Congress, Nancy Pelosi, becoming rich because they are lucky or is it because they have access to insider trading information that they then give to their husbands who trade on the stock market? Mm -hmm. Hello there, you 5.7 million Awakening Wonders. Thank you for joining us on this voyage towards triumph. By God, what a rocky road it's been for all of us. But we're improving together, aren't we? And if someone hasn't told you that they love you today, by Jove, let me be the first. I love you. Do you subscribe to our channel yet? Subscribe right now and turn on the notification bell in case the algorithm hides the truth from you. You know what algorithms are like. Today, we're talking about Nancy Pelosi and the stock market. She has been confronted with the grim truth that possibly some people believe that Nancy Pelosi's trading deals or the Pelosi family's trading deals are somewhat benefiting from Nancy Pelosi's insider information. A new filing from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi showing a purchase by her husband last month of 20,000 shares of NVIDIA. She does always look a bit startled, don't she, Nancy Pelosi? 20,000 shares of NVIDIA. Presumably because she's always been told of a new windfall. We just made another million! <laughs> Worth between one and five million dollars. This is especially noteworthy since Congress has been debating billions of dollars in support for the U.S. chip industry. So while the Congress is debating whether or not to give billions of dollars of support to the chip industry, Paul Pelosi has invested in a company that benefits from profits in the chip industry. Now, if you see a connection between Nancy Pelosi debating about whether to give billions of dollars of support to the chip industry and Paul Pelosi investing in the chip industry, you're obviously some sort of conspiracy theory. I uh, go, oh, what if they talk about stuff when they're at home and him being a trader and all, they make some money from those trades. Uh, over the course of your career, uh, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information he's received? What are you saying? If ever you're asked a difficult question in public and you don't want to answer it, there's a few simple tips. First, ask them to repeat the question. What are you saying? Then sort of crane forward, all weirdly. Uh, over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from you? No. Then say no, as if you're sort of offended by that. No. Even though perhaps all day at work you've been debating whether or not to give billions of dollars to the chip industry, your husband has just invested in the chip industry. Absolutely not. Then to make absolutely sure that people know you disapprove of the question, just give that microphone, just give it a little bobbing down. Like it's offered you fellatio, but then shown reluctance. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Then leave. Just leave altogether. Walk right out of there. Don't stop walking till you're at home and you can enjoy some of the money you've made from the chip industry. Okay, thank you. If you want to look like you've got nothing to hide regarding questions around the chip industry, don't, as soon as someone mentions the chip industry, destroy the device that you're supposed to talk into when talking about the chip industry and just leave your place of work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Still going. Where is she? Where is she? Why won't you wear something luminous so we can spot you 20 seconds into the shot? Oh, she is. A few facts on the matter, close to 75% of the Pelosi stock trading over the last two years has been in big tech. That's more than $33 million worth of trading. Indeed, all five of the Pelosi's most traded stocks over the last two years just so happen to be the five Silicon Valley giants that will be most affected by pending legislation. I don't have anything personal against Nancy Pelosi. You know, some channels they just might not like Democrats or they might not like her style or something. It's not like I personally dislike Nancy Pelosi. I'm more interested in systemic corruption and a system that allows members of Congress or a sitting Speaker of the House to make investments in companies that they are regulating, or if not directly, then members of their family, either a spouse or a dependent child. For me, if you're interested in eliminating corruption, wouldn't you just pass regulation? that prevented that with no loopholes before you start. No loopholes. The company in which the Pelosi is traded most often, Apple. Buying and selling in that one company accounted for 17.7% of the Pelosi's overall trading volume. And yet, during this same period, Pelosi held at least one private conversation with Apple CEO Tim Cook about the state of Apple and possible effects on the company from various pending bills to reform Silicon Valley. Now, they won't have talked about that. They could have talked about all sorts of stuff. And another piece of regulation you could pass is that you wouldn't have such a tight, cosy relationship between the Speaker of the House and the CEO of Apple. Do you know what I think the problem of the world is today? I'll, I'll tell you. Let's cut to the chase. I think that big business 
state power and the media cooperate and collaborate to such an extensive degree that it's impossible for ordinary people like you and me to have an impact on the power dynamics that directly affect our own lives. We don't run our own community. You could vote. You might not vote. You might vote Republican. You might vote Democrat. None of those things are going to be as impactful as the relationship between Tim Cook and Nancy Pelosi, not to mention the obvious personal benefits of potential information that she could allegedly give to Paul Pelosi. So for me, this is an important story because it's a demonstration, as you know, as you're obviously aware, of the relationships that exist between the state, between Congress and the corporate bodies that they're supposed to regulate. How is there going to be meaningful regulation that's beneficial for ordinary Americans and ergo the citizens of the world more broadly if those kind of relationships exist? Let me know in the comments below because I simply can't imagine how it's possible. Sponsorship. I'm on the internet right now. You're on the internet right now, but who else knows you are? If you've messaged anybody this week, would you share with us the names of the people you've messaged? Uh, Senator, no, I would probably not choose to do that publicly here. What's playing out now at big tech companies and social media sites sets a dangerous precedent. Have you ever wondered how free to access tech giants make their money? Have you? Have you wondered? Well, it's by tracking your searches, your video history and everything you click on, then selling off your sensitive data. When you use ExpressVPN, you anonymize your online presence by hiding your IP address. That makes your activity more difficult to trace and sell. Whatever you're looking at, I'm not judging you, that's your business. If you want to look at that, it don't matter. Looking at our most private of places, our nooks, our crannies, our crevices. Oh no, you effing well didn't. Not now, we just express VPN you right where it hurts. One revolutionary tool we can start with right now is stopping the Googles, the Facebooks, the Alphabets and the Sesame Streets from spying on our most intimate nooks. I bloody well won't have it and neither should you. Click on the link below. Visit expressvpn.com forward slash brand and then you can be like me, fighting against injustice everywhere. Stay free. The week before the House Judiciary Committee voted on reigning in big tech, Speaker Nancy Pelosi's husband exercised a bet on Google parent Alphabet in a timely transaction that netted him 5.3 million. What a timely transaction. God, your transactions are really timely. Yeah, I'm always making timely transactions. Let's learn a bit more about you. What does your wife do for a living? Why are you asking that? Don't know, I just wanted to learn more about you because all your transactions are so timely. Well, not that it's any of your business, but she happens to be the Speaker of the House. God, what does she do? All sorts of things. Is one of those things regulating big tech and having insider information on important financial data that might affect the stock? Listen, this interview's over. I'm going for a drink and then a drive. Paul Pelosi, the husband of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, is charged with two counts of drunk driving. Google, one of the companies in which the Pelosi stock trades have made millions, is one of the top five donors to the House Speaker. So I suppose, look, here are some practical things we're pointing out. Google spend loads of money on lobbying. There are relationships between Nancy Pelosi and big tech that are both financial and personal. That's already been demonstrated in this article. There's presumably a relationship between Nancy Pelosi and Paul Pelosi. Paul Pelosi trades stocks. Even though these are big numbers for most of us, 70 million, 3 million, 33 million, whatever it is, in the scope of a national and forget global economy, these are small numbers. But what they are representative of is systemic corruption. So like the sort of baffled idea that there's nothing better that could be done. People just dithering about, oh, it's Putin's price hikes. Oh, it's things beyond our control. It was the pandemic. It's Putin. It's Putin's pandemic. What if Putin does a pandemic? What are we going to do then? There are things that you could like literally today, if your interest was shutting down corruption, there's stuff you could do right now. Don't have people uh, trade if they've got access to that kind of information. Stop lobbying. Google aren't allowed to lobby anymore. You just would do those things. The reason you don't do those things is because they're not trying to get rid of that stuff. That, that is the system. That's the system doing what it's supposed to be. It's not an error. It's the function. Pelosi purchased up to $1 million of Tesla shares before the Biden administration delivered its plan to shift towards electric vehicles. I got a Pelosi hunch. One of my Pelosi hunches is coming on that things is going to go a little bit more electric around here. And now things are going to go a bit more electric around here. No, <laughs> Electric, you say, Joe? I'm going to celebrate with a drink. And then a drive. Two counts of drunk driving. Anyway, probably this is a one-off from Nancy Pelosi. I say, if you want to know what a person's really like,
Just spend a little moment watching how they behave around children. Flores claims Pelosi tried to shove her young daughter out of the way. <laughs> she is trying to do it. I wouldn't call it, it's not an aggressive elbow. It's a sweep, I would call that. It's like she's trying to hook her under the elbow and then just loop her out of frame. During her swearing in ceremony last week. Hundreds of millions of dollars have been exchanged on the stock market by elected officials in 2021 alone. Does that seem right? How about none? How about none? How about you have instead juries, ordinary members of the public, Instead, get rid of the whole professional class of politicians. Are you up for that? Have an elected assembly made up of ordinary people. They vote, we vote. I mean, aren't you up for significant change at this point? In just equities, Congress bought and sold nearly $290 million throughout the year. In 2021, only three hedge funds beat the market. But in Congress, 35 politicians did even better. Do you know what the point of a hedge fund is? It's experts. They're financial experts. They spend their whole life learning about what to invest in. They get money from all sorts of sources and they purchase shares. Look, I'm not an expert. We're already at the limit of my knowledge. But my guess is that hedge funds know loads about the way the market's going to behave. It's their livelihood. Well, three of them beat the market in all of last year. 35 Congress politicians did better. So either... Like, Congress politicians are really, really good at their hobby. Like, are also Congress people. Yeah, also, I'm one of the world's best basketball players. Yeah, I'm a really good racing guy. Oh, you should see me when I go fishing. I yank Moby Dick out of the water every time I dip my hook in the lake. Like, either they are so good at something they're just doing on the side that they're better than the people that spend their whole life studying it, or option two, I mean... Get your head around this, tinfoil hat time. They're using information that they get while in Congress to make investments that they know are going to pay out. And that is corruption. More than corruption, it's crime. Some politicians held securities in the sectors they vocally expressed support for, such as senators holding cryptocurrencies while drafting crypto regulations. I, for example, love those cryptocurrencies, and I would like to see those cryptocurrencies given a warm bath and a pat on the back and a little rub on the nuts. Bye! Congress has 45 days to disclose trades to the public. Sometimes they're late. Got 45 days. They meant all they've got to do is, will you tell us the truth about what you've been doing? Yeah, give us 45 days. It's day 46. Fuck off! In the Senate, just 23 senators filed their 2021 annual disclosures by their deadlines. They don't take it seriously. Why would they take it seriously? It's meant to be their actual job. This is the thing. Or remember on the January 6th, <gasps> you desecrated our democracy. It's precious democracy. Then people in wigs, the constitution, the cursive, the fountain pen feathery thing. Why won't you respect it? Well, maybe because they're all total bastards. As usual, most members availed themselves of a 90 day extension that will give them until sometime in August to release their reports. Kick it down the road, everyone will have forgotten about it. Like, look at this job. Right, you got a job, you're going to be well paid voting on laws. Can I accept lobbying money? Oh, God, all right, you can accept lobbying money. Can I trade in stocks and shares? Oh, God, it's a bit corrupt. Come on, let me. All right, but do you have to disclose it within 45 days? What if I'm too busy? All right, we'll give you a 90-day extension. Fuck you! That's who's in charge! A review of this batch of disclosures shows that last year at least three more senators appeared to have violated the Stock Act. That's a loophole-laden act that was meant to keep them somewhat in check. According to a tally maintained by Business Insider, at least 60 other senators and representatives have failed to report their trades in accordance with the law. They're breaking the law! They're making the law and they're breaking the law. What's your job? Making the law. Then what else you do? I'm a break in the law. Well, why don't you just fuck off? Save us all a lot of time. Here's a list of some lawmakers who have violated the Stock Act in one way or another. We've just included the funniest ones. There are others. Senator Diane Feinstein, she's a Democrat from California. She was months late in disclosing a five-figure investment her husband made into a private youth-focused polling company. What? You mean I can't even invest in youth polling? What? You think I'm doing it just for the money? I love polling youths. And Senator Brand Paul, a Republican from Kentucky. I love seeing him digging out Fauci. Uh, Mr. Fauci, is it true that you get those royalty kickbacks? Did you know in advance that that money was going from DARPA? Yeah. Oh, I love that conversation. Well, check out this dude. Paul was 16 months late in disclosing that his wife bought stock in a biopharmaceutical company that manufactures an antiviral COVID-19, the Washington Post reported. I know that you are keen to just think, oh God, please, is there someone? Is there someone we can trust? Someone we can have faith in? Yeah, there is. You. It ain't any of them. I'll tell you that now. Don't matter what colour their tie is. Don't matter what colour their skin is. Don't matter what they're claiming that they care about. They're not going to do anything for you because they're inside a box called 
fuck off you. That's what the box is. If they're in that box, they're not going to help you. It cannot be done from in there. So there you have it. You can condemn Nancy Pelosi all you like, and I imagine you do like it. But recognise that this kind of problem seems to be pan-political, trans-partisan. It affects all of the political class because it's institutional and systemic, i.e. it's permissible by law. There are companies that spend money lobbying and it's an obvious advantage. I mean, maybe you or I would do it if we were in that position. I don't know. Maybe we need significant systemic change. Maybe we need to get past our ridiculous tribal affiliations to these groups that ultimately operate at the behest of centralised corporate interests and will never do anything that meaningfully impacts your life because the system doesn't permit it. But that's just what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Give this video a thumbs up, share it around, have a laugh, make it part of your culture. Remember to turn on the notification bell because we need you to be directly connected to our content in case we make some changes. If you enjoyed this video, have a look at either of these two, both very good, and sign up to my mailing list right there so I can tell you about live events I do online and in physical real space and about any big shifty sexy little moves we might be making over the coming months. It's really vital you sign up to that, please. I'm trying to give you a hint. I'm trying to tell you something important. Stay free.